All right, so today I'd like to go over some free PBX security. I'm not going to get into anything advanced. I just want to go over some very basic low-level concepts that I see a lot of people getting wrong. Uh, the first is when it comes to opening ports. There's this big misconception that if you're using free PBX and you have phones and a PBX on the same network, that you need to open ports 5060 and 5061. And if you don't open those ports and open ports 10,000 through 20,000, that your PBX is not going to work properly. I never forwarded those ports in my router's firewall, and it works. So the way that this works is kind of, it's kind of like browsing the web. So a lot of people think that you need to open ports to make the system work. But you don't open port 80 when you go to browse the web, do you? You don't, you don't go to you know, check your weather, let me open port 80 in my router to this computer. That's not how it works. So you open a port when you're providing a service. So I don't have to open a port to browse the web to check out a website. However, if I want to run a web server on my, uh, on my network, then I need to forward that port to the computer that I want to run a web server on. The same thing is true with FTP clients. If I want to download a file from an FTP server, I don't have to open port 21 on my router. But if I want to run an FTP server, meaning this computer that I'm using to edit video right now, if I want to put an FTP server on here that serves files to other people, then I have to open port 21 on my router and make sure that the requests are forwarded to that particular computer. Now, the same is true with the PBX system. If I have the phone on the same local network as my PBX system, I don't have to open ports on my router to make it work. You only have to do that if you have some type of setup where the phones are on a separate network from your PBX. So let's say you have a PBX in Michigan and your branch office is in Connecticut. Then you get into dealing with VPNs. Then you get into dealing with VPN tunnels and opening ports and all sorts of wacky stuff that I'm not going to get into in this small video series to make that work. And there are many companies that offer great products for that. So when I, was, when I had a, a second store location in Brooklyn, I wanted to use the same PBX. I wanted to use the same network. We set up these two Microtech routers and those two routers, I'm pretty sure I'm mispronouncing the name, but... I'm sorry if I am, but they were very, very cool products that I will recommend. You get, you get a router for $86 that you could practically run an ISP off of. Very advanced, but you can do that. You can set it up with a VPN so that you can have locations all around the country and everything works. But that's a little bit more complicated than what I'm looking to get into in this video. The point I'm trying to get across is don't start opening ports on your router. If you're sitting next to the router, the phone, and the PBX and things are not working, look elsewhere. The second thing here, again, that, that's also going to go for things like, um, like the web interface. So a lot of people will open port 80 because they say, what if I want to change a setting from far away? You have to set up something else. You have to set up a VPN. You have to edit. Uh, you, have, you have to log into the web interface when you're on that local network. Whatever setup you do, for the love of God, please do not open port 80 on your free PBX box. Port 80 is constantly being probed by hackers all the time. And if there is any exploit in your free PBX system, they are going to log into it. They are going to uh, they are going to run these exploits, and they are going to add users and extensions. And you're going it, to it's it's going to be very very bad. Uh, you know, I've seen systems where you could not access the voicemail, you couldn't access the call recordings, where the call recordings and the voicemails were deleted. All sorts of crazy stuff. When, and, and all of this happened on systems where port 80 was open to the public. So before you open a port on your PBX, just think about this stuff. Uh, the second thing is going to be with passwords. So when it comes to passwords, again, I was joking and using really dumb passwords for this because it's for a YouTube video and I just don't feel like writing it down or remembering it. All of these are getting wiped. What I recommend you do is use something like this when you're creating the secrets for your phone or the password for your endpoint. So this is the GRC Ultra High Security Password Generator. So let's just view this on the screen right here. Okay, we're viewing the wrong screen. Thank you for viewing the wrong screen. So this is the GRC High Security Password Generator. So you can just Google it or you can go to grc.com slash passwords.htm. It's going to create these really long strings of passwords that are again, high security. And you can use these. So I, would, I, I use these for my phone secrets. I use them for my phone passwords. I use them for my voice pulse, uh, for my vo voice pulse endpoint, which the PBX is going to be attaching to. I'm not setting one, two, three, four. I'm not setting my name or my birthday or, you know, a, a, as the password for these endpoints. That's a bad idea. And, one, and, and the last thing I want to get into here is physical security. Where is the PBX? Is the PBX somewhere where if, if you fire an employee, 
and they're mad at you that they know that on their way out, they can accidentally trip over the wire going to the PBX. Where are you putting this thing? Is it in a locked closet? Is it in a locked server room? Is it in a lo- Is it in a ventilated environment that's not humid, that's not damp, that doesn't have holes in the wall or the ceiling? And is it in a place where, again, if somebody, if you fire somebody, or is it, it, it can, or you're arguing with a customer, can they just say screw you and while they're walking out, knock the thing over? People don't think about this. They shove the like it's the same thing with surveillance systems, with phone systems. People take this box. And they shove it wherever it's convenient at the time, whether it's in the corner of the floor where somebody's going to step on it, whether it's in the front of the store where a customer can actually play with this and go, hmm, what's that? They think it's a, they think it's a toy. Just put the, remember to put this thing someplace where it's actually secure. You know, a lot of people these days, they want to be these security experts, these hacking experts, these, you know, the, and one of the things about computer security and IT security in general is that it, it you know, while all of that, that stuff is good to know, very often computer security comes down to common sense. A lot of the big hacks and a lot of the big exploits that you read about, if you read further, you'll realize that it wasn't necessarily that the person who did it was the biggest genius who managed to crack the best code in the world. Very often it's a really dumb, stupid, terrible mistake in administration where the password was 1234 or somebody wasn't watching this or where they had a million dollar secure facility, but this one box of important stuff that nobody ever thought anybody who was steal was sitting right next to the door. I mean, it's, it's, it's really dumb stuff that gets people in trouble. Again, and it often comes down to laziness or wanting to do a quick fix or, tr- or, or troubleshooting. And, you know, I can't connect. I can't make calls. Let me try forwarding the ports. That didn't work. Let me try the set- changing the settings with my VoIP, VoIP services provider. That worked. And then forgetting to go back and close the ports that you just opened. Again, I'm going to make a phone call right now just to make a point. I have two PBXs on my network, same network, and I have two sets of phones all on that same network. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the phone from my network to call the phone system that was set up for another office. It's all on the same network, and you're going to hear them ring. You know, you really don't have to forward a bunch of ports to do a bunch of crazy stuff. This re- if you set it up properly, it should just work. That's another thing that I read online. You can't have two PBXs on the same network. You can't have two PBXs on the same network without a bunch of crazy setup. If that's the case, then why are phones ringing, you know? That's all I have to say. So, um, again, when it comes to security, just just think before you open ports. Think before you put this box where anybody can can open it up and steal it. And think twice before you you trust any of the troubleshooting steps you read online. Uh, the free PBX forums are an absolutely amazing resource of, of very very knowledgeable and talented people. And if you read, just just read around that forum, look for the people that have a lot of posts, that have a lot of good answers, and try to use the search feature before you ask a lot of questions. And, and just trust, have a little bit of skepticism before you trust what people say. And if you're going to trust people, make sure you're trusting the people who are giving experienced advice on these forums rather than the people who have one or two posts who are telling you, you need to open all these ports. Because again, the biggest problem with these systems, the biggest problem that I see with any free PBX-based phone system is just crap like port 80 is open to the world and the browser password is like one, two, three, four, you know, just, 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 just be careful of that stuff because it will destroy the entire system.